That's right, we live. You're now tuned in to the Blast Global Barbershop Mix right here on Blast Global Radio. I am your host, King Darius. Right here, you got my man Tyrone in the building. You know what I'm saying? Getting laid out right quick. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the people, Tyrone. I just want to say uh, enjoy this time with family, friends, and loved ones. I make the most of it. I make beautiful memories that you can look back on and appreciate and smile about. So this is going to be a very, very good day. No doubt, baby. You know what I'm saying? We sitting up here, we ain't here listening in the barbershop listening to the King Darius show. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's playing on Blast Global Radio right now. You know y'all can go to y'all Google Play Store and download that Blast Global Radio app. You know what I mean? I got you know, a story to tell. Can I tell a story? Yeah, man, go ahead and tell a story, man. We ain't here kicking it, man. Yeah, go ahead. All good gifts come from above. Well, anyway, this young, beautiful couple went to the fortune teller and they said, uh, how do our future look? And the old woman looked up from her crystal ball and said, well, you're going to have a beautiful baby and that baby going to bring you all types of riches. Well, anyway, about a year, close to a year, baby was born. And when they looked at that baby, that was the ugliest baby they ever seen. The baby looked like a little monkey. The only thing was missing was a banana. Well, anyway, they said, God, why would you do this to us? News traveled quick over the media. Everybody heard how ugly this baby was, and they wanted to go see this baby and see for themselves how ugly this baby was. So they went and seen and they, they supported the fact that that was one ugly baby. Well anyway, when people came to see this little ugly baby, they left the baby with all types of money, gold, silver, diamonds, pearls. And before the baby's parents realized it, they was rich. So the moral of the story is, it's nice to be beautiful, but it's even better to be unique. Seen any ugly babies? Hmm. Hmm. So everybody is unique in their own individual way. And once you see something unique about it, don't try to hide it or deny it. Embrace it. Hmm. And once you embrace it, everybody else will break it and embrace it as well. Hmm. You know, so we gotta love ourselves. And don't forget that God don't like ugly and, and he's not too crazy about that pretty neither. <laughs> Say God don't like ugly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we grew up on, you know, people all the folks used to tell us all of that all the time. Yeah, and we, like God don't like ugly. Yeah. 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 But they ain't talking about ugly as in looks, though, yeah. right? Ways. Yeah. No, I'm talking I, about the, your mentality. Exactly. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, beautiful people, and their attitude towards other people is just as rotten and ugly. You know, that's where that golden rule always applies. You gotta treat people the way you wish to be treated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. So live up in here, baby. Hey, whose name is cut here? Yeah, take me a sip of my coffee. It's called Enough is Enough. It's about um Davey Boy. You feeling that? He okay. talking some deep stuff in there on that record. So where he from? Toledo, Ohio. Okay. And how would you classify his music? I think he's a a, a nice MC. Honestly. Okay. Because everything I didn't heard by him so far, man, he 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 been killing me. Okay. Lyrically, man, this boy right here, man, is, is on something something else, bro. So 
That's what you do. That's what I look forward to when I listen to hip hop. I look forward to hearing stuff like this. Okay. Just from me, my yeah, person, well, you know what I like. Well, well, if you give them high ratings like that, then it mm -hmm. should be appreciated. At least people should listen to them mm -hmm. and see for yes, themselves. Sir. Because one thing about truth, you don't need no representation or verbalization. Exactly. It speaks for itself. You know. But I like good music. Jazz, hip hop, bebop. Rock and roll. Yeah, I love me some good jam. I like me some good rock too, man. Yeah, I like it all. I even dip a little bit in that heavy metal. Yeah, I really never got off into the heavy metal like that. I never really was feeling that stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was always, that music kind of music was always kind of. Uh, on, on, that's a whole number frequency, man. Right. You know? Well, a lot of it is. But you know, it's just, I understand what they're saying. And at the same time, I said, beware. But like, you know, everybody had a frequencies according to, you know, generation. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Because what, 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 you know, sounded good, and what, what, you know. Back then, might yeah. not sound appropriate yeah. now. Well, you know, I was never into heavy metal, so, yeah. you know, I, I, even though I went to a school right here in the city of Detroit one time, um, when I was young, it was called Lessons for Middle School, and during the time while I was still born there, there was a, still a lot of white folks still lived over there in that neighborhood, over there on, on Joy, um, Joy and, and Burt Road area. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I grew up hearing it because I was living over there in that area. I lived on Westwood and Elmira. Yeah. And um and all the white folks over there, they was vibing off of heavy metal. That was their thing. They just well, they was on they was on that A C D C and Motley Crew and Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got they knew the consist of uh, They used to listen to uh, uh, uh radio stations like Riff. Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they would play all the ACDC and Motley Crue and Def Leppard. I yeah, actually, they, I actually uh, like Def Leppard though. Yeah, yeah, they got a few, you know. <laughs> they got this track, man, called Pour Some Sugar On Me. Hey, but what you think about this track right here? You didn't heard this? What's that? That's this one right here. Basically, man, because he, you know, he didn't redid that, uh, that Janet Jackson and I heard Albert, that making love in the rain. Yeah. yeah. That was my joint back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Still my joint right now today, because I still bump I heard Albert making love in the rain. As a matter of fact, it's in the playlist on, on Blast Global Radio right now. So okay. you can hear Making Love in the Rain. All you got to do is tune in to Blast Global Radio, so, man. Uh, Y'all can hear a whole lot of stuff, man, the blast from the past that I be hitting y'all with. So, Red Ryan, that, that came out about when? Who? The original came out about when? What, Making Love in the Rain? Yeah. Oh, uh, shoot, I ain't for sure, but I want to say it came out like around 89. Okay, that's good enough. 1989 or something like that. So, uh, what were you doing back then in 89? Man, I was 1989, man. I was still in high school. Oh, well, I was fresh, young. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? To investigate, check out everything. Yeah. And the music document where you were at that, at particular, that time. that particular time. Yeah. I just like the song, man, because, you know, I was, you know, I've been in music all my life, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, when it comes to music, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I know good music, bro. Right. You live it, you breathe it. You know what I'm saying? I live it, I breathe it, you know what I'm saying? That's all, that's, that's the only thing I got a good grade in, bro. 
Yeah. Y'all hear that? The only thing I ever got a good grade in in school was music and gym. Remember that, all right? They know music and gym, baby. Yeah. I ain't care nothing about nothing else that was going on in school. I wanted to be physically fit and I wanted to sing. That's all. That's that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, and music that. blow too, you know what I'm saying? But see, uh, to me, music is soothing. But see, but, 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 but when you were in school and when you were in high school in the music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially yeah. back during when I was going to school, your music instructor really you really took you down through the history of music, right? right. So you you you, you created a, a strong appreciation for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of classes they had. Music you know, appreciation. you know, you, you when we was in high school, we was learning about Ella Fitzgerald and Duke right. Ellington. You know what I'm saying? You know, we was learning about them. Yeah. Sarah Vaughn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nat King Cole. We was learning about oh, them. Nancy Wilson. Nat, we was learning about them, man. In yeah. school, bro. Rick Franklin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the bands in school during the time I was going there, they was phenomenal, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you know and, what and happened? But you know what happened? You know what happened right here in the I'm city of Detroit, bro? They started cutting a lot of them programs exactly. out of the schools, man. Right. Huh? Putting money elsewhere. They start cutting that money and stuff out of schools, man, because that's how that we as black people was building our wealth. Yeah. We build our wealth through music and entertainment, man, because that's all they get was music, entertainment, and sports. Huh? Yeah. But it, it, it become a fair doubt, man. People really wasn't making it in the music like that mm -hmm. because they wasn't owning their stuff, yeah, bro. Yeah, so they was they being exploited, bro. And at the end of the day, most of them people, man, most of them musicians, got all them people that had broke, bro. Yeah. That, that's what made it. And that's what made them uh, rap stars keep their own money. All of them that broke. I mean, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I be trying to get the old school people to to realize, man. Because, you know, y'all be around here. You know, you, know, you stuck on, on that genre and that, and that, and that, that age, you know what I'm saying, that when that music was really loud. And I loved a lot of that music, man. I love the Temptations. I love the Supremes. I love, I, love, I love all that Motown stuff and Philadelphia International stuff. But at the end of the day, man, them dudes wasn't getting no money, man. Well, that's why today artists know how important it is to govern themselves. They just didn't up and learn that, man. They seen how people was exploited, used, and abused, and suicide. Yeah. But people steady want to steady submit their music over to them, though. Not knowing that the, the culture of vultures is real. The culture of vultures. I like that statement. The culture of vultures is real, man. And even though, you know what I'm saying, yeah, you get to, like, I, I, I have an argument with a person, with a friend of mine, and I always explain to him, they be talking about being mine, ass cap, and, you know what I'm saying, how they ain't got no royalties and all that kind of stuff. I say because. It's not designed for you to get royalties. And then, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, and then at the same time, you submit your music over to them, you know what I'm saying? And for the, the stations that's being my license, it's a cap on how they spend your music. And people don't understand that. When you're an independent artist, it's a cap on how they spend your music. Yeah. So he, he ain't dead. Again, exploit, exploitation. It's a cap on how they do it, though, bro. Yeah, by design. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? You wonder how come you ain't got no royalty? You ain't got no royalty because you, you know, you can't, you can't expect to get, you know, royalties don't pay out like that. You know what I'm saying? Your music, in order for you to get a nice little royalty, your music got to be constantly being spent. Yeah, on, on 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 a worldly basis, man. On uh, damn near every radio station around the globe. But you receive a nice royalty check. And 
And then you got independent radio stations, and you got independent stations, you got stations that's, that's tied into that system. And then for the stations that's tied into that system, hey man, trust me, they can't play that music like that, bro. Huh? Yeah. They can't play that music and if they ain't pay, if they ain't paying for that promotion, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Their music is not being spent like that, bro. But if you're independent, and if you're independent, you remain independent, and you don't sell out to a lot of these entities that's out there, you can do that. You can create your own narrative, your own content, you can push it how you want to, you can put it where you want to put it. And that's what you want to do. Because you, 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 you're controlling it because it's yours. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You created that. You see what I'm saying? You don't create it and then give it to the give it to the cultural vultures. And then the cultural vultures limited and then you got people you know what I'm saying that's really liking your music and play it on their platforms or, or, or use it in different scenarios and they say, well you can't do this because you know what I'm saying? Well then look. This is how these artists get their exposure, man. This is how they keep build their fan base. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a fan base if you want people to support you. Huh?